Hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Katie, and this is The Housewife Did It. Pop culture edition and end of season one edition. Yeah. This is our last week of episodes for season one. Uh, Because we want to celebrate the holidays. (laughs) Yeah, so we'll have this end of pop culture season one. And then Friday, end of all of season one. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back on January 9th with our next pop culture episode. So we hope you enjoy your holidays too. Yeah. And you can spend them listening to all of our old episodes. If you're missing us profusely. Or watching our bonus episode. Yeah. That went out on YouTube yesterday. Yep. Anything about that? Um, It's about the Diet Love Pass incident. Um, I included over 100 photos from the trip. So please look at it and... That took me a long time. Please look at the photos. Yeah. Give us your thoughts. Yeah. We don't know what happened. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of Christmas. There's not a lot going on. I disagree. These days, pop culture wise. Okay. I think there's not, not a lot, lot of shows. shows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So... Every the general consensus about Big Brother Reindeer Games is that no one thought they would want to watch it, mm-hmm. and it's turning out to be pretty good. Everyone was like, "I started mm-hmm. seeing this tea on Twitter, and it brought me here, and now I'm sucked in." Um, I will say I'm not like fully watching it. I'm like keeping up with the drama. And catching it where I can. I'm not going to commit myself to reindeer games. But Mm -hmm. it's been some pretty crazy drama. Which I think comes with the fact that, like, once you've done Big Brother, people know about you. People, like, have had opinions on you after watching your season. And especially, like, some of these people have, like, Big Brother podcasts. Like, Cody and Derek. And people... Like, Taylor Hale does the interviews and stuff. And so, like, people have started to form opinions as they've watched the other ones play. And then now they're playing together. So, Mm -hmm. apparently, Tiffany from Cookout Season, um, she has been pretty outspoken about this last season of Big Brother saying that America is creepy and or a predator for Mm -hmm. dating Corey, who is younger than her. America Mm -hmm. is 27, and Corey is 22. However, lately, pictures... Because, also, Reindeer Games is, like, done filming. Like, it it wasn't, like, normal Big Brother, where it's, like, airing as it's filming. Like, it's already finished Mm -hmm. filming. So they're all, like, hanging out now. Um, Pictures are surfacing of her and Cameron... Being very close and, like, cuddly with one another. Mm-hmm. And Tiffany is nine years older than Cameron. She is 43 mm-hmm. and he is 34. Also, even if it's not romantic, it's a little strange to, like, buddy up with Cameron while calling America a predator. Right. I was going to say, like... I think regardless of any age differences, it was pretty clear that Cameron was showing predatory behavior Mm -hmm. while on the show toward several women who were younger than him. Yeah. So, like... And unwanted, like, entirely. Right. Also, though, like, I, I wanted to say, like, that's the power of, like, how bad this season was as far as, like, compared to the Mm -hmm. live feeds. But you, you telling me that Tiffany didn't watch the live feeds, I don't believe that for a second. Right. Not for a second. 
Yeah. Also, as I mentioned, Cody has like a Big Brother podcast. And he had apparently made frequent comments about how about Taylor Hale not being a good player. Uh, so mm-hmm. far in Reindeer Games, he has had to rethink that and admit mm-hmm. that she might be pretty good. So, she also won her first season, Cody. Right. You did not. She didn't have to go back. Mm-hmm. Nicole... Uh, she just so okay nicole says that since cody did not take her to the finale of the season that they were on together that he won uh two years ago or three years ago or however long it was that they have literally not spoken since then even once which is like so freaking petty and she's like, it's, like, really yeah. awkward to see him because, like, I literally have not spoken to him. I bet that is awkward. Like, mm-hmm. because I, I feel like... that, Nicole. But I feel like it takes, like, a lot of work to avoid him, yeah. like, in this same sphere for that many years. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that would be awkward. Cameron, in his intro, <laughs> said, I am a daddy to a little girl. There's so many other ways you could have said it. Which is just gross. Yeah. I have a young daughter. I'm a father to a this many years old girl. Yeah. I'm... I'm a dad. <laughs> anything else. Literally anything else. Uh, also, apparently there was some drama between Nicole and Brittany outside of the house. Which, like, this is kind of what I'm talking about. So basically, Brittany... I think they were friends, but then Brittany had watched Mm -hmm. Nicole's season on All Stars and kind of spoke poorly about Nicole online. Now, I don't know if that was, like, on a game level or if she, like, really, like, betrayed Mm -hmm. her. But she was like, we also have not spoken. (laughs) Which, like, good, because Nicole sucks. Yeah. I also wonder, though, because, like, that, that was the season where Nicole was, like, uh, Janelle is not invited to my wedding anymore because I thought we were friends mm-hmm. and we're obviously not friends. And I feel like a lot of people were like shit talking Nicole online because she was being ridiculous. Yeah. Once again. Yeah. Um, on Southern Charm this week, they are still in Jamaica. And while they're there, a page six article comes out claiming that Austin and Taylor have been hooking up or at least have hooked up before. Both of them continue to deny this while in Jamaica, but now everyone believes it and is pissed at them. And Craig says they, they should just say it's true. Even if it isn't just to get it all over with. He was like, I understand y'all are saying you didn't, but, like, if you want to maintain a, any kind of relationship with Olivia, that's what she needs to hear. Just say you did it. Like, move on. Um, Olivia hates both of them. Madison is eating it up. They keep calling her a bored housewife. So what? This is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Craig is so over it, and Shep is using it as a chance to make himself the victim. I also think, so like... He keeps- Madison has made it very clear that, like, being a housewife is, like, her dream. And that she's, like, very yeah. pleased with this this part of her life. Yeah. So every time Austin says it, she's like, that's all you got? Like, yeah. come I, on. I, okay. I, I, I am bored. Yeah. I got one friend here, and she's not the one causing the drama. So, yeah, I am. Yeah. Um. So, Chef just keeps saying, like, you fucked my girlfriend. And then he has to say, like... Right after we broke up. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Craig and Austin keep pointing out that Shep doesn't get to be mad because he cheated on Taylor through their entire relationship. Like, you didn't care she was your girlfriend. Yeah. Why should should he care that she was your girlfriend? Yeah. And Shep says that Paige is cheating on Craig, which is why she isn't in Jamaica. And then, like, Craig FaceTimes Paige and she's like, why does everybody keep talking about me when I'm not there? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Um... Shep also yells at Vanita at one point, and she tells him he can't talk to her that way, which is something he seems to have never heard before. 
Yeah, his apology the next morning was very nice. Like, yeah. he, he was like, yo, like, I'm sorry. Um, But, yeah, I also don't know, like, if any other woman had said that to him, how that would have gone. Right. Right. And I don't, I don't feel like his apology was, uh, like, he was like, there was just, like, a misunderstanding. I think he was, like, a, I feel like he was more apologizing for the part where she thought he was saying yeah. that Olivia needed to apologize and not so much apologizing for yelling at her. Yeah, because it did seem like she apologized for yelling. Specifically, she said, I'm yeah. sorry I yelled at you. And he said, like, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. So. Right. Yeah. A very Shep apology, but. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the episode, we get a cliffhanger where Taylor says she basically needs to say something after this has been going around for two months. I was like, okay, like, she's obviously not going to admit it. But then Austin keeps whispering, oh, God, please no to himself. Yeah. While she stands up to speak. And I'm like, why are you so stressed? Yeah, but he was like so fucking drunk. And, like, when Olivia, literally Olivia said nothing, and he was like, don't, mm-hmm. you don't have to talk to me. Don't, don't. And she's like, I literally am not saying anything. So yeah. I kind of thought, when he was saying, oh, God, no, I kind of thought he was just being like, oh, God, more drama. Like, don't do this. Like, why is Taylor standing up and, like, leading mm-hmm. a court? Like, I kind of felt the same way. And, like, on one hand, like, obviously the teaser is that they want us to think that she's going to say, like, because she says, I want to finally put this to rest. So, like, the idea is that she's going to say, like, so it did happen. But I also think it's, like, possible that next week we're going to come back from the to be continued and she's going to say, I want to put this to rest, so let's stop talking about it. And, like, not really say anything, but, I mean, I guess we'll see. One thing that also gets brought up in that episode is some texts she sent to Shep. Yeah. Where she, like, tells Shep that if his dick isn't going to work, she's going to stick with Austin. I did not understand the text. Like, she says, how are you? And he says, good, I guess. And she says, I meant your dick. And he's like, oh, something like, oh, that's a problem or, like, something, I guess, not good. And then she's like, then yeah. I'll just go be with Austin. I was like, I can't even understand what he's saying. Yeah. I, I'm, I, the whole time I was thinking, because he was like, I'm okay, I suppose. I was like, I could not date an old man. No. I could not engage in a conversation over text with an old ass man. No. He Taylor. said, ha. I don't know how you did it. Ha, period. Ha, period. I would choke mm. myself. Yeah. Stop that. Awful. Yeah. Which, like, um, also good for Olivia for being like, listen, I maybe could have forgiven you for this one thing that you kissed him and didn't tell me whatever, but now you're still fucking with him. Like, you're still using him to make Chef yeah. jealous. You're still hanging out with him. You're still texting him. You're literally talking about using his dick. So, like, right. we're not, like, done with this. This hasn't, like, ended. Yeah. I don't understand. This continues to be a problem. Right. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Shep cheating on Taylor, Southern Hospitality has aired season two and came out with drama right off the bat. So in episode one, we find out that Lucia was fired after being caught drinking on the job. Um, Lucia is a single mom. She's like the only mom in the group. So people were, like, pissed. Last season, this would not have mattered because everyone was drinking on the job. But now they have new personnel and new rules, which Lucia was made aware of. So, like, duh, she was fired. Mm-hmm. Um, then Mia, who is, like, best friends with Lucia, was trying to defend Lucia, and she tells Leva that she is a hypocritical boss. Because she didn't fire anyone else for drinking on the job. And Level was like, mm, enlighten me. Who mm-hmm. the fuck are you talking about? And Mia said, well, me. And so Leva said, okay, then you're fired too. Bitch, what the fuck? So smart. Like, what did you think? <laughs> she said, she was like, and if I found any, 
find out anyone else was drinking on the job, they will also be fired. Yeah. Because that is the standard I have set. Yeah. Dumbass. So everyone's like sad about Lucia and Mia, but all, everyone is also in agreement that the way Mia spoke to Levo was inappropriate. Mm-hmm. So they're all kind of like, mm, yeah, like, I hate that they're not working here anymore, but also, like, I am not about to be a dumbass like Mia was. Yeah. I'm going to keep that thought to myself. Um, so then we transition from that drama. Bradley hears from one of his personal training clients that she has met a guy named Trevor who drives a pedicab and they made out and they have been texting and she was like wondering if Bradley knew him and Bradley was like yes I know him um he has been dating and living with my manager Maddie for over a year now Mm -hmm. and so the girl's like oh shit like I thought, I thought they were dating, but, like, then we made out, so I thought maybe not. Um, now, it is important to point out that last season, Maddie warned a girl that Brad really liked that he had gotten head in an alley behind the restaurant while they were together. Brad very much denies this and blames Maddie for ruining his relationship. So, we do need to keep that in mind. Maybe there's an agenda here. Yeah. But so Brad asks Maddie if she knew about this and she was like, yes, Trevor is so honest with me. He showed me these messages right away. You're causing drama for no reason. And Brad is like, okay, so you know they made out. And Maddie is like, she says, fucking liar. And she leaves work in the middle of her shift with with no notice to anybody and goes home to confront him. And she had texted him on the way there, and so when she gets there, he's like, you can come in, but they can't talk about the cameras. Yeah. So we don't know what happened. By episode two, she has moved out. She is still trying to get him to admit it, which he won't, but she knows it's true because he cheated on her before season one had even aired. Ah, it's Stassi. Mm Mm-hmm. And... Grace Lily is trying very hard to get Maddie to believe Trevor because she likes that they are besties and their boyfriends are besties. That's a good She's like, I think he's a great guy, and I love that my boyfriend has a friend that it's is dating literally my best saucy. When Kristen and Katie yeah. were like, do not ruin the, the friendship with yeah. all of our boyfriends. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because last season... Grace, Lily, and Maddie hated each other so much that they had to be working at separate restaurants. Mm. But they had been previously best friends, and they, like, they reformed their friendship last season. Um, And now I think Grace, Lily, is trying not to lose that. Um, Also in episode two, Lucia is at lunch with Mia, and she gets a text from Leva saying that they can talk. Mia does not get the same text, obviously. Um. But I will say, in episode one, Leva said, like, because in episode one, when Mia was going off on Leva, Lucia was in the restaurant trying to speak to Leva. And she couldn't because Mia was screaming at Leva. Um, And Leva knew she was there, though, and she said, like, I wonder if she knows that this is not negotiable and that she will not be getting her job back. Yeah. Like, she's like, I wonder if she's coming here trying to get her job back. That's not going to happen. So I do wonder if this talk for for Lucia, she thinks it's, like, a chance to get her job back. I don't think Leva thinks that. Yeah. Um. So I currently don't watch Southern Hospitality. We It's, mm-hmm. like, next up on our list. But I mm-hmm. did see at BravoCon that Oisin... Is that how you pronounce uh-huh. this person's name? Oisin O'Neill? Um, Oisin? That, mm-hmm. that he is an old friend of Brock's from Australia. Uh, and he, that... Huh. He is not from Australia. Well, he said, I'm an old friend of Brock's from Australia. Or, like, that they had, like, known each other. Maybe, like, played a sport together there. Mm-hmm. Or something. Um, then I've seen online some sleuthing that he is the guy who grabbed Charlie's ass at the party on Vanderpump 
where she said, like, uh, my boyfriend's not going to like that. And then Sheena, like, did not stand up for her. Mm-hmm. I think that's wild. I have, I had also seen that. Um, and so Oisin is Irish. Okay. And he met Maddie and Grace Lily while they were on vacation in Tulum. And he was, like, a party promoter there. So they became friends. And then he, um, he said that they called him and were like, hey, we think you'd be great working at Republic. Why don't you, like, move to Charleston and you can work there? And so he did. Um... But yes, I have also seen that. I and then at this, they went, they had a dinner um, because Will got into law school, and Will has not met Oisin, but all the other guys are like obsessed with him, so they brought him, and he was definitely giving off like disrespectful of women vibes. Yeah. Um. So. Yes. I think that checks out. Yeah. Um, I do think it's strange because of the way that they aired him grabbing Charlie. Um, like, pretty clearly was on him. Like, I don't like some, I, I feel like sometimes they air things and make it seem like Charlie would be like overreacting or something and they didn't yeah. this time. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that they would give that person a job on a show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah he's so far he's um consistent i guess yeah good to know well that transitions us to vanderpump rules uh we got the season 11 full trailer and find out that season 11 will air on january 30th Looks like we will get to see Ariana and her new boyfriend together, at least based on the trailer. It seems like a good amount of them together. Mm -hmm. Tom says in a really cringy scene to Schwartz that he is young, hot, single, and ready to mingle, which is gross. Mm, And also not true. No. Yucky. Like, also- Not young- yeah not hot no one wants to mingle with you i was gonna say like like hot single and ready to mingle like that's fine if that's like his perception but like he is aware that he is not young like he yeah has said i was in a midlife crisis like yeah i'm confused um there are some scenes showing joe and tom schwartz do you think we'll get any of Floody this season? I, like, don't think so. But, I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I was trying to, like, figure out the timeline. Yeah, but... I only wonder because she came after Joe, it seemed like. And then they've, I think, hung out semi-recently. Yeah, I mean, they did watch What Happens Live and stuff. But uh, maybe. I just, I'm trying to think. So, like... They were together at Winter House during March because of the, um, Mm -hmm. whatever. And I guess they started filming probably, like, August or July. So, like, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like they would have showed us that, but maybe not. Maybe it's not that exciting. Yeah. Um, Katie warns, seemingly, Sheena, that if she stays friends with Tom, Ariana is going to cut her off. Yes, that seems like what Ariana herself had warned about. Um, There is a girl with pink hair who is shown making out with both Katie and Tom Schwartz, (laughs) which is going to be fun. Yeah. (laughs) Katie says, may the best man win. Tom Schwartz drops the news to Lala that he made out with Sheena in Vegas presumably while he was with Katie um, because he's been Mm -hmm. with Katie 
the entire time that we've been watching the right. show. And by the time he wasn't with Katie, Sheena was with Brock. And I feel, mm-hmm. I feel pretty confident that she didn't cheat on Brock. But yeah, you know, um, it cuts to Sheena saying, "I miss who he was to me." But frankly, I assume that's about Sandoval. Like, I don't. I think mm-hmm. that was a little misleading. I don't think she's talking about Tom Schwartz, but maybe. Uh, Sheena had already teased at BravoCon that we would see some conflict between her and Brock. Uh, I don't, like, I don't know. And then they showed it in the trailer that her and Brock are going to fight, but, like, didn't expect them to be fighting about that. And then I'm also like, did he really not know? Like, is that something she wouldn't have told him? Like, hey, before you, yeah. I had made out. I don't know. So that could also be editing yeah. that they want us to think that's what they're fighting about. But they're at least going to fight for some of our first times seeing that. Mm-hmm. But I also, like, need to know, a few seasons back... When they're fighting in a bar and Schwartz says to Sheena, like, you're the fakest of everyone here. All you care about is selfies. And she says, all you care about is making out with chicks in bars. Like, at that point, had she already made out with him? And presumably in a bar? Yeah. Also, like, I think I've seen people point out that Sheena does not seem... To feel any guilt for this. Yeah. Um, and it like her and, and Katie's friendship has fluctuated so much that like maybe that right. depends on like did she like Katie yeah. at the time that it happened? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And but there's there is no timeline where this works out where one of the two of them was not married mm-hmm. while the other was single. Um, and I wonder if Katie would have already known since her and Sheena have been friendlier late, like since San- Scandival. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also wondered like, is this, was this something that like Sheena didn't like Katie at the time? Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think based on what the trailer is trying to show us, Katie did not know, but mm-hmm. again, like that could be all editing, But, yeah, I mean, the way it makes it seem is that they're going to have to talk about this. So, um, Sandoval, I guess, in an attempt to tell Sheena that she's just like Raquel, uh, Mm -hmm. says that she has also been, or, like, knows what it's like to be the other woman in a relationship, which is just rude. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, he is seemingly going to struggle throughout the season with being cut off and blocked by Rachel because he is still in love with her, or at least mm-hmm. until he decides he's young, hot, single, and ready to mingle. Uh, I also was, like, not even going to give life to this part, but it is being played and replayed so much on social media That I guess I should mention it. In one scene, I guess like the closing scene of the trailer, Lala says, I've never seen someone get cheated on and then become God. I, everyone was like, she's so jealous. And like, I did not think that it came off that way. Like, it didn't seem that different Mm -hmm. than the stuff she said at the reunion, which was like that. Ariana has been very lucky and that Ariana like kind of agreed with that with that that that's like not necessarily the standard that you get cheated on and then you get like financial and career success because of it Mm -hmm. uh it is not normal that you gain like CNN level fame and like all of these like opportunities because your man cheated on you and Lala surely didn't uh And I think, like, for Lala, we're still using this you lose them how you get them narrative that, like, she, like, deserved anything that Rand did because, like, she was the other woman. But, like, no one's saying that about Ariana anymore, at least. Like, Mm -hmm. at first people kind of said that. But, like, I don't know. So I don't think it's, like, crazy 
for Lala to say that. It seems very on brand for Lala to say that. I don't really know that Ariana would disagree with that statement. And I also think it was abundantly clear to me that that was editing that made it sound, like, so angry. And, like, I don't think Mm -hmm. she was saying it out of, like, jealousy. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll have to see the context. But I don't know. She has since come out on, like, her Amazon Lives and said, like, it was taken out of context. But I also, like, don't really think that she should have had to say that. I thought it was pretty clear. Mm Mm-hmm. And I understand that I am in the Vanderpump Rules minority, people still hating Lala all the time, saying she just is, like, so jealous, she's just, like, such a shitster, but, like, dude, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going to bat. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think that it was, like, malicious or jealous, but, like, Lala is never one to beat around the bush, And I think she's pointing out, like, exactly what's been happening and how different it is from things that have happened to other cast members who were cheated on. Like, it just, um, it is different. And I I think that there's also, like, this, like, there's, there's a different layer to it, like we've talked about, of, like, it being two other cast members like having like a month long affair and I think that like things are different for Ariana because of like the publicity the show is getting for it right and then wanting that to make sure wanting to make sure that that went to Ariana and not Rachel and Tom but I don't think that I don't think Lala is wrong and so I think I think that she's just pointing out like facts yeah and I also think this idea of like jealousy like seems weird because like listen do I love Ariana yeah I do but like to be honest all of these opportunities that they're giving even like special forces having Tom on like that is like good for them like those are that is good for those shows to like market the intense success that Vanderpump Rules has had so it's not like crazy to say like this is not normal like this is this has essentially turned into like the same reason that like the nfl or espn is like constantly showing taylor swift because it gets people that aren't watching football to watch the games it's like it's good for tv to have these Mm -hmm. people on so like it's not that she's just like ariana is like such a such a great person that like she deserves it more than Lala. It's just that, like, this blew up bigger, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, I also saw that Kristen Doty is hinting that season 11 will kind of lead us into the spinoff that she's supposed to be on, which may also explain why we are seeing Jax again in the trailer. Now, unfortunately... Rumors are also swirling that Kristen and her boyfriend Luke will have to pause doing any Vanderpump Rules recap episodes on their podcast because Bravo says she is sharing too much about production, which is true. She does. Mm -hmm. But this is the downside to being their employee again because I was living off of the things that only a former cast member could tell me. Mm -hmm. And now, taken away. She's gonna have to start writing into Dumois. Yeah, actually, that would be fine, Kristen. <laughs> In an exclusive sneak peek during the Decade of Rumors and Lies special on Peacock, we learn that uh, Tom Sandoval thinks that his LED lights, although they bother the neighbors, fall under his freedom of speech. Uh,. And he also has his assistant glue back together the penis flute that Logan broke. So, he's a... I bet it's awful to be his assistant. Yeah. Uh, and then... His assistant one day is gonna murder him in his sleep. Yeah. Please. And then in... I won't even say a twist. I guess it's not shocking. But... Just for someone who is so good at, like, knowing what to say on screen, I'm like, what? 
So Sheena did a podcast interview where she says that Ariana doesn't understand how hard this has been for me personally. Now, I can acknowledge that as it pertains to Rachel and restraining orders and your best friendship ending and you went to bat for her so hard that it has been personally difficult for Sheena. But Mm -hmm. with Tom, like, Ariana doesn't get how, like, Tom cheating on her has been so hard for you. Like, I get that you and Tom were, like, close, but I feel no hesitation in saying that you are not at the top of the list of people that he feels he has betrayed. Like, if he writes Mm -hmm. notes on his dying day to all the people that he hurt, like, you probably wouldn't even get one. And if you did, you'd be one of the last. So, girl. Yeah. That's nuts. Like, it affected Tom Schwartz. It affected his employees more than it affected you. Chill out. People are ripping her to shreds for this. And, frankly, this reads as more jealousy to me than Lala. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think she could have said it was hard on her personally without... Or, like, and leave Ariana out of it. Like, we don't, you don't need to say Ariana will, might never know. Like, okay, Ariana's got her own shit to worry about. This yeah. is, this is, she's the top person this was hard on. Right. Like, you can say, like, you know what? Like, this is obviously, like, devastating for a lot of people, but, like, here's how it affected me personally. You right. don't have to say, like, because it, it feels like she's putting, like, pressure on Ariana to, like, find out how hard it was on her. Right, to, like, you she doesn't way. check in with me. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. Like, if I heard that, I would think, like, oh, does she want me to ask how hard it is on her? Yeah, because I won't. Yeah, I don't. Because, honestly, I sure like, will not be doing that. any explanation she could give, like, is just going to continue to be, like, uh, not reading the room. Like, it's just going to continue yeah. to be, like, not, I don't know. It's not yeah. going to make any difference. Like, Ariana's not going to be like, oh, like, I get that. Like, again, if you wanted to go on there and say, like, this has been pretty hard for me, too. Like, I lost two very close friends, especially Rachel, who I went to bat for, said that I would let my husband sleep in bed with her. Like, that's been really hard. It's been hard to be in court about this. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Like, no one doubts that, like, it has been hard. But, like, the yeah. actual Tom part that, like, that, like, somehow Ariana's not thinking about how her partner cheating on her has affected you. Like, yeah, you're right. She hasn't. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any other Vanderpump Rules thoughts? Mm, no. <laughs> Should we listen to the first episode of Rachel Goes Rogue? I don't know. And report back. Yeah, maybe. It's... I'm scared. <laughs> I Yeah, I mean, I want to know, like, what is she gonna... What is she gonna tell us? What? Yeah. What's rogue? How much more rogue can she get? Yeah, I would think that you're, like, and done... And fucking your friend's boyfriend. Yeah, done with the rogue now. Yeah. Rachel goes un-rogue. I, I have to hear that intro, though. Yeah. All right. Um, on to the aftermath of all of the Bachelor Nation finales. So, like we said, there's not a lot of shows going on right now, but damn, did things happen after this finished. So, even though Bachelor Nation finales happened and the shows were over, I think we got more interesting content in the aftermath so an update on the bachelor in paradise relationships avon and kylie now the last time we spoke we hadn't seen anything from them but Mm -hmm. apparently they did post a relationship announcement and within 24 hours kylie found out about multiple infidelities and they had broken up avon then released a statement 
apologizing for hurting Kylie. He said, I have made major mistakes in the relationship and hurt someone who was very close to me. So, that was our first blow. Mm -hmm. Then, Kat and John Henry also announced that they had broken up, citing a difference in career goals. Uh, Again, last time we spoke, Kat had posted, like, pictures to her story of them, so... Mm -hmm. I guess that happened pretty abruptly, too. And then Aaron B. posted that he and Eliza's relationship had ended as well, and he mentions that there are tricky emotions watching it all unfold, which I thought was strange. Like, is he citing that, mm-hmm. like, the reason for their breakup is that, like, they didn't like what they saw of each other on the show? Yeah. I think all of it is absolutely wild because I don't think we've ever ended a season of Paradise with absolutely, like, no couples to show for it. Yeah. Um, And especially, like, you said, like, the quickness of some of it. Like, Kylie and Kat, like, posting about their relationships and then almost immediately being like, just kidding. Yeah, but I wonder if, like, especially with Kylie, but I just wonder, is that, like, gonna be part of... I don't know, this, like, very connected culture we're in now. Like, someone Mm -hmm. saw Kylie post it, and then they were like, oh, shit, they are still together, so I need to tell her that I saw him. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to tell her if they're not together, but now that they are. Like, you know what I mean? So, obviously, with Kat and John Henry, they have posted multiple times that there are no hard feelings, that they are good, that Kat is a great person. Um, So, I'm not saying that's what happened for them, Mm -hmm. but... Um, I think that's interesting, yeah. Uh, Olivia also straight up screenshotted and posted a conversation between her and Kat. So, Olivia had shared, like, a fan mashup TikTok of moments of her during Paradise. That included a clip of the conversation between her and Kat where she put her hand in Kat's face. Uh, fans and apparently Kat concluded that because Olivia shared this on the day that Kat and John Henry announced their breakup that she was attempting to shade Kat. Um, Kat apparently messaged her and then unsent the message but Olivia tells her like I saw that (laughs) like I saw it before you Mm -hmm. unsent it. Olivia also says that the post had nothing to do with her. Kat replies that like I think it's perfectly reasonable for me to assume that it was about me and I honestly feel sorry for how much hate you hold in your heart Kat is the most delusional person alive yeah dude there is like simply no competition um I wonder though about Olivia's posts with Tanner Mm -hmm. she has posted several TikToks with Tanner, I kind of wonder if they're together. And then also in the TikToks are Michael A. from Katie's season. And Sam, the poop baby girl. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, like, are they together too? Are they all f- just friends? Like, but there's a lot of content that Olivia's been posting with Tanner. Yeah. Personally... I get the vibe that Olivia and Tanner are just friends, but, like, that's based on nothing. So, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sam, I saw that for his birthday, she was with Chris Randone and, -hmm. like, feeding him a cake or something. Uh, So people think that they might be together, which I actually think could make sense as a pairing. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So... I don't know. And then... I don't know either. We also got an update from the Golden Bachelor. Really, the only update we were waiting for. Leslie shared a little bit more about the infamous fantasy suite conversation that she had with Gary. Now, she sticks to not wanting to expose everything that was said, but she says it was something like... 
save the date. This is what we're going to do. Two more days and we'll be done with this. We'll be together and start our lives. Anything like yeah, that, she says, I get why she was mad. Yeah. Yeah. She says he did everything but propose to her. Yeah, it sounds season. like it. Mm-hmm. It sounds like saying, like, I'm going to propose to you. So just hold up. Yeah. Yeah, just wait. Yeah. Wait a little longer. Yeah. Now, to close us out, since this is our last pop-off episode of 2023, I thought we would give a review of our 2023. So, Mm -hmm. we'll tell you a few of our favorites, and then I was just thinking we'll go into, like, top five overall pop culture moments of the year. Not necessarily ones mm-hmm. you liked the best, but, like, ones that have stuck in your mind. hmm So, first up, what has been your favorite book of the year? Mine has been Three Women that we did in our book club. Mm-hmm. I also really liked My Year of Rest and Relaxation, but Three Women was better, so. I guess also Three Women. It doesn't have to be. Did you read something better? I I can't remember what I read this year. Oh. You need to keep a list. I know I read I read Mindhunter and I read the last two books of the To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Yeah. Uh, series and I think of those that I remember Three Women is the best. But I might be missing one. Yeah, it's also like a year is a long time, and that was the yeah. like the good book that you read most recently. <laughs> yeah. Um, any good standout movies from this year, Mary? Um, my favorite movies that came out this year were the Barbie movie and Flame and Hot. What was that? But I did Flame and Hot. Uh huh. It's the story of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Ah, it's an interesting favorite, I think. It's really good. Um, I also like The Little Mermaid and Totally Killer. Okay. Um, But Barbie Movie and Flame and Hot were top tier. Yeah. Flame and Hot is very good. It is a biopic of the man who came up with Flame and Hot Cheetos. It was directed by a woman. I don't remember which one. Um, but it's really good. You're like the TikToks, name a woman. You're like, the woman that directed Flame and Hot. I don't know her name, though. This is very cool. Like. Then it must be. Mo- is, uh, there's like the, the film, the filming of it, I guess. Yeah. Eva Longoria. Oh, nice. Yeah, she did good. It's yeah. really good. You should watch it. Yeah, I feel like, aside from the obvious, like, the Barbie movie was great, the Eras Tour movie was great, um, but I wanted to give a shout-out to Elemental that was mm-hmm. fantastic. Uh, also, I wrote this before, but I did see Wonka last night, and it was also mm-hmm. fantastic. So, I was going to ask why you didn't throw Wonka in there. Well, because I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> But it was very good. My husband said I was very uh, hesitant about Timothy Chalamet, but he was great. Okay, favorite new reality TV, or I guess new to you, reality TV that you tried this year. Um, I feel mm-hmm. like if we went favorite reality TV in general, it would be Van Front Rules, because it was obviously a good year. So mm-hmm. uh, just favorite like new to you TV. Oh, I did, like, actual, like, new show. If I was thinking, like, new to me, Summer House and Winter House. Okay, you did those this year. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, new in general, the new Roni yeah. people. Yeah. Um, Because now I kind of want to watch the other Housewives, and I've not really been interested in Housewives before. Mm. So, new, like, just came out in 2023. I loved... The ultimatum queer love. I thought it was great. Um, 
But yeah, I Bravo wise, I tried Southern Charm this year. Very impressed. Mm-hmm. I'm caught up. It's been great. Um, and we are recently dipping our toes in the Housewives of Salt Lake City. And I mm-hmm. am pleased. <laughs> it is good stuff. But we haven't watched it all yet, so I don't want to commit to that is my answer. But okay, that's what I got. <laughs> all right. And then favorite, same concept, new to you, musical artist um steve lacy or sabrina carpenter okay so you're one of those people that stands by she she could win best new artist even though she's been making music since 2015 uh you said new to me no i know but people have said that like she like just because she's been making music like she's like boomed this year but in 2015, she was still on Disney Channel. Yeah. So I don't think we should count that as the same. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Music girl career. Yeah. Um, Plus, you know, they've, like, they've I don't, pointed out... I don't count... I don't count High School Musical, the musical, the series, albums as... Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo. Rodrigo music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do think it was by herself, but... I mean, people have yeah, argued the so. same thing, like, that Billie Eilish or whoever else has won new artist awards, like, they're not, like, new, new. Like, they've made yeah. music. But, yeah, I think for me it probably is Renee Rapp. I, like, can't recall if I had, like, heard anything of hers before. Probably, mm-hmm. but, like, certainly it it boomed this year. So. Mm-hmm. All right. And then, your top five overall pop culture moments of the year. Mm, Daisy and Gary from Below Deck Sailing Yacht. The the five way. Like, finding out, yeah, Mm -hmm. the love pentagon. Finding out that they had hooked up. Um, Scandaval, Rat House ending, and specifically Lindsay breaking the Rat House sign in half. Yep. Um, Harry Styles shaving his head and Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I obviously Scandaval. Um, I was like, okay, Katie, think of something that's not Taylor Swift or Bravo that like you will remember from this year. Uh-huh. And I was like, I don't know that Titanic submarine. Like, I'll remember that. Um, so I'll put that down. <laughs> Uh, BravoCon is, like, an entire moment for me. So, like, Bryn's heels Mm -hmm. getting stuck, Lindsay and Carl seeing each other for the first time, all of the Captain Jason crushes, like, that's all gonna stick with me. Uh, I also think, like, I will not, I feel like as, as the world we've forgotten this, but I will not be able to forget Taylor Swift dating Maddie Healy. We were all worried for a minute there. Um, Mm -hmm. and then as a moment in and of itself, all of the Taylor Swift street looks that we've gotten this year. So. They're good. Yeah. Iris tour TikTok has been fun for me. Yeah, it's true. I know. I, like, want to be, like, Taylor Swift being, like, constantly present in my life. That is the moment. Anything related to Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, starting a podcast yeah alrighty um we'll see ya next year well we'll see you Friday well if you only listen to the pop culture episodes we'll see you next year (laughs) yeah um yeah that's it okay okay Bye. Bye. Next time on The Housewife Did It, Mary will tell Katie the story of the mysterious murders of Russell and Shirley Dermond. Follow us on all social media at Housewife Did It Pod, Housewife Singular. And go to our YouTube for our current bonus episode.